Hey ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be looking at workflow in Houdini SQ. Now in the past, Houdini SQ has um, workflow automation features, but we've expanded upon that with this new revision of our product. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And what I'm going to do is take you to an existing matter um, that has a real simple basic workflow, just so we could start a discussion. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the little me icon so it displays all matters, not just mine. And we'll find this appeal matter here. Now you'll notice that there's a workflow icon at the top of every matter form. Um, it's above all these um, collapsed uh, areas of the form. Um, if, if I'm on a matter that doesn't have any workflow defined, uh, such as this one here, you'll see that the icon will be disabled and I can't access it. But I have created a real simple one on the peel type matter. Okay, so let's go and take a look at that. I'm going to open the workflow and you'll see it has um, some three basic steps. Now, how workflow is depicted in Houdini SQ is using what's called a Kanban board. Um, Kanban is a Japanese word for billboard or signboard. And um, a Kanban board is a way that engineers um, visualize uh, their workflow, um, all the tasks that need to get done, and where they currently uh, stand. Each task is listed in a, in a column that depicts the actual step or status of that particular task. Um, so let me give you a, a, a quick rundown. I'm going to go ahead and just click, click Create Workflow. It's so real basic. I have three basic steps, incomplete, pending, and filed. Uh, now, these actual tasks on, uh, on a workflow, now these, these are just made up, just as for this example, um, are nothing more than just to-do. So if I was to edit this, it's just a to-do, okay? But it's a to-do when you have a collection of to-dos um, and, and, and a whole bunch of steps, it forms a workflow. Okay, and what's nice about a workflow, it allows me to visualize very, uh, um, in a very convenient, intuitive manner um, everything that needs to get done on this particular case. Uh, for example, this will notice um, I can simply just move those particular to do's to new steps, like so. Now, you notice that there's a red bar and a green bar on the left side of these, these to do's or tasks, and the reason being is, is that that's an indicator of a particular state regarding the date. So in this instance, this, this particular uh, task was due to be completed on May 24th. Today is the 28th. So um, it's showing a red, uh, a red highlight there to let you know that that's actually passed through. You'll also get an alert uh, in Houdini under the alerts and activity system um, of any pending uh, workflow to-dos that are actually passed due. And that's within a 24-hour period. I'm gonna go back to matters. Um, and reselect that appeal guy and, and select the workflow again. Um, and the green one just means that it's, it's currently uh, not past due, okay? Um, so that's, that's, that's basic. So, now, so let's look at how we actually create a workflow. Now, workflows can be pretty complex. I'm going to stick to the basics. Um, and let's go ahead and do something that's more um, closer to reality. I'm going to go ahead and, and find the litigation matter here. Okay, um, this is just test data in our demo system, but I'm going to select a, a, a litigation case. Now, under litigation, I have no workflow. It, it's disabled because I haven't, de I haven't defined what the workflow should be for litigation type cases. So in order to do that, if I'm an admin, I get the customize icon above any form. I'm going to go ahead and click that. It puts the form in customize mode so I can change labels, reposition fields, uh, so on and so forth, uh, like so simply by dragging. Um, but what we're interested in is not triggers, but workflow. And we'll talk about triggers a little bit. Triggers um, allow you to um, automate tasks, generate documents, send emails, notify staff, have a pop-up pop-up. Um, whenever a, um, a staff member does anything on, on a particular form or particular field. Um, and we'll look at that in a little bit, okay? Um, so, um, so, for example, if, if I was to select case ID, um, I can go ahead and say, okay, on when the field value changes, these are the type of to-dos I can create. I'm, I'm sorry, triggers I can create. 
I can uh, send email, uh, create documents, calendar events, create to-dos, alert staff, uh, assign groups to records, um, assign records to groups um, of staff, uh, set field values, you know, I may want to do calculated fields, things of that nature, uh, show and hide collections of fields, and of course, a pop-up message, a pop-up warning window. Um, but we're going to do a workflow. And when I select workflow, you have some basic, you know, um, what's true of every one of these tasks, some basic information. Uh, once you read that, you just click OK. So <clears throat> now I'm on a matter uh, the lit of a litigation type, as you can see here. OK, uh, so litigation type matter. So when I'm doing customization, anything I do is for that particular form I'm currently on. So I'm going to create a workflow for litigation type matters. Now, how we start is we start with um, with the number of steps. Now, the steps can be any number of steps you want. Um, we have some predefined. I'll go ahead and click that for you. We have filed, prep, pending, incomplete. Now, you can you can add your own. For example, I noticed that there's not one here called done. So I'm going to add one called done. I'm just going to type done, hit enter. It allows me to confirm. Yeah, now we have uh, done as one of our options for steps. Now, when you, when you create the steps, the steps in the workflow are, are displayed as columns and they you, they read from left to right so um, an incomplete for example would be the first column on my left and done might be the far most right column uh, when I look at a Kanban board okay um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select these in the order that I want these these particular steps to appear so I'm gonna start with uh, incomplete um, I'll just do three for now um, I'm gonna do uh, filed and done okay simple now that's my basic step. Now what's, what's the next um, step in our process of creating a workflow? Is creating the, the, the task. Now since we're on a litigation case, um, I click add and I click edit. And the type of tasks I have here are all kinds of, of uh, tasks that have to be completed when I go to trial. Right? I have um, prepare a trial notebook, prepare a trial brief, uh, organize evidence, motion uh, purificate, mediation, Mandatory state settlement conferences, business parties, all these kind of steps that you, or tasks that you, that, that would be associated with, with litigation. And for, for this, I'm just going to select three basic ones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select um, prepare, prepare trial brief. I'm just going to put as a subject. It's not really um, that important since the type itself is going to be displayed as the step. Um, so I'm just going to put the, the initials P, T, B, uh, just for those. Uh, demonstration. I'm going to click next. Now the next step in creating a, a task is I want to define when this particular task needs to be done. Now remember we're creating a template. We're not really defining the actual um, task now. What we're saying is this is what I want you to, 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 to create for me when I start a workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay I'm going to select trigger date. What that means is when the workflow is started, use that this particular date with an offset. So what I want to do is I want to add, I want this to be created this to be due 10 days after I start my workflow okay so that's how that works there and now I'm gonna say okay who I'm gonna assign it to now I'm just gonna assign it to an individual I can say user or the matter record owner so remember whenever I go to a, a new matter or an existing matter and I create the workflow um, it's gonna use the data from the existing matter to create these actual tasks so it'll assign the task to Jane Joe uh, with this date offset 10 days from now, 15 days from now, trials 145 days out from June 7th, things like that. Um, from the trial date that we have specified in the matter. Um, so I'm just going to select a uh, uh, user, that, which will be me because I'm, I'm the one that's going to actually create the, the actual um, uh, workflow when, I, when, when we're done setting it all up. So it'll be assigned this one to me. I'm gonna click next. Now the next tab is pretty important. It's pretty cool. This is where Houdini separates itself from the pack. Uh, Houdini has this very complex trigger um, trigger engine that allows allows it to to automate tasks um, just by a, a user doing something, some sort of action based on rules. Well, you can do the same thing on workflow. In most systems, um, when they use a Kanban, they usually do the task manually. They create a document, they send an email, then they go to their project and they update the project status. Houdini is is throws that out the window and does it a little different. What Houdini does is you just simply go to the workflow, uh, drag your items to a new step, and 
the, the things you want to get done that need to get accomplished, Houdini automatically does for you. For example, I may want to move something, um, I move something to done uh, for trial, and it generates all these documents, it sends emails, it notifies staff, it sets calendar items, things of like that nature. So you could do that here. And I'm going to give you a little example of that uh, in, in more detail as we create a couple steps. For now, I'm just going to create this basic step here. Uh, so we have one, we have our, our basic three steps, incomplete, filed, and done. That may necessarily fit, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, an actual trial or, or the logic of a trial, but just, just bear with me. Um, so I have task. I'm going to go ahead and add another task. Um, let's select uh, jury instructions. is usually done a lot much later. Uh, case management conference, done typically uh, pretty early. Uh, so I'll call it CMC, and it's not important what you call the subject, it's whatever you want, you want additional information. Those will be the trigger date too, and I'm going to make this just, uh, let's make this 15 days from the day after I create the workflow. And I'm going to assign it to, let's just assign it to Annie Zhang, because she handles all that, that type of work. And it's going to be assigned by the person that creates the, uh, the workflow, which would be me. I'm not going to create any triggers in this, in this case, and then we'll do one more just for, for fun. And this one we'll do a little closer. Let's just find trial. Let's do trial there. And I'll do I'll call it trial. And I want this to be uh, the trigger date. I want it to be. Um, let's make it twenty days. This is just for an example. Uh, I could type in uh, two hundred days. I could type whatever I want there. Just make twenty days. Um, if I want the item to be billable once it's marked complete, I simply would say yes here. It's like the type of event. I want created, um, so I would have a type uh, of event there, trial, for example, and it would make a billable item. Okay, so we'll just do that for now. Um, I want this to be assigned to the user, which is going to be me, and also the user. Uh, we'll make it Jeff Staus. Um, a great CIC, by the way, um, Houdini SQ. If you need a uh, customization work done or or some help with Houdini SQ, Jeff Staus the guy. Um, so let's go ahead and add a trigger now. So I'm going to go ahead and and um, I can assign triggers to each one of these individual steps, incomplete, filed, and done. So what I want to do is when this particular workflow task, which I'll go back, which we call trial, right? We call it the trial. Um, and uh, when it's moved to the done column or the done step, let's pop up a message. Okay. So we'll just call it, um, I was going to call it pop up as a title and say, uh, hello, Frank, like that. And click save. I'll save my actual steps uh, and my individual tasks. So I have three steps and three tasks. So let's take the form out of customization mode. I'll click that there. And you'll notice the workflow button now becomes enabled. So <clears throat> now we've, we've defined this workflow for any type of, of matter that is of, of the physical type uh, litigation. Uh, example here so if I was to go to this autofill test you'll see it's disabled but if I go to litigation um, it shows it enabled so um, we have our definition set so what's next okay so I've created a matter I have an existing matter I want to start the workflow I want to start the actual process I've talked to the client we're proceeding with trial um, so I've created entered all the information for the matter now I go to the workflow tab and I simply say create workflow now what that does, it goes ahead and creates all my tasks and places them in the first step, which is incomplete. Now all staff have to do from this point on um, is simply go to the workflow and see at any point where they stand, okay? Um, nothing's been done on this case, obviously. And as things get done, they simply move them to the particular step. Now, file doesn't necessarily um, uh, work with every single, um, you know, uh, tasks you may have. So you can have multiple uh, steps here, more than three. Um, you can scroll to the right. You can have 20 steps, 40 steps, 100 steps. Um, I just use three for the example. Uh, and as, as items get done, they simply move them over like so. Now remember that, that in most cases and in most case management systems, um, most are very weak in, in regard to workflow because what they want you to do is continuously go back to your workflow and update it so everyone else knows where, where, where how the, the case is progressing. Um, it, it's kind of a two-step process. I, I, I file petition, uh, um, uh, petition prep, 
Um, I, I, I send emails um, uh, for, for my, my expert witnesses and, and communication, notify staff, generate documents. Um, in Houdini's Q, we want the workflow to actually do um, create the work products for us. And an example is we create that simple little trigger, there's a simple pop-up. Now we could create documents, email, stuff like that. So what we did is when we, we, we said when the trial gets moved to done, do some work. In this case, a simple pop-up, there you go, okay? Um, so as you can see, um, the workflow and the Kanban board itself, uh, it, it lets you visualize um, where the case uh, currently stands, its progress with all the tasks that have to be completed. Um, but where Houdini separates from the pack is that the, the workflow, in fact, as you m want things done, you simply update your workflow and uh, the workflow automation features of Houdini SQ actually create the work products, generate documents, um, send emails, notify staff, et cetera, et cetera. So that's Houdini SQ um, workflow in Houdini SQ 2.0. And thank you for joining me.